Hello and welcome to Daily Records. I am Tommy Burton and today we are going to be talking about an album that's probably near and dear to a lot of your hearts. This is Neil Young's Harvest, released on February 1st, 1972. This was the fourth album uh, released by Neil Young, solo album, studio album. Uh, everyone knows Neil Young, uh, Canadian singer, songwriter, musician. Uh, Buffalo Springfield, there's probably not a whole lot uh, I can add to um, this to say about Neil. But talking about this album, uh, it does feature, uh, strangely enough, the London Symphony Orchestra on a couple of tracks. And he's got some help from his friends. Uh, notably, uh, David Crosby and Graham Nash, Linda Ronstadt, Steve Stills, and uh, James Taylor show up here. It was a huge commercial success. It went to number one, uh, and there were a couple of hit singles uh, from this album, Old Man and Heart of Gold. Uh, they were number one songs, and this went on to be the best-selling album of 1972 in the United States. So, a little background here. I'll show you guys the label. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young kind of uh, went their separate ways in 1970. And so Neil uh, got together with some country session musicians. Um, he called them the Stray Gators. Uh, and he recorded a country rock album, is, is what he was doing, uh, which was kind of the sound in California. Uh, Flying Burrito Brothers, uh, Eagles, and I'm going to say my guy, Michael Nesmith. Uh, and it was, it, was a, it was a huge hit, like I said before, uh, a few uh, singles. Now, there were some... New Young themes that showed up um, from previous stuff, the song Alabama, uh, which was sort of uh, a sequel or an unofficial sequel to Southern Man. Uh, the Needle and the Damage Done uh, was a song about a few of Neil's friends uh, who had died of heroin addiction. And um, the other uh, side of the song Alabama uh, that we were talking about we all know, or most of us probably know the story. It, it, it spawned the reaction song or answer song, Leonard Skinner's uh, Sweet Home Alabama. They they called Neil Young out on that song. Uh, and so he later said, and I, I've read his autobiography, uh, Waging Heavy Peace. I think Neil Young kind of said it, it, it deserved uh, what, what Leonard Skinner said um, because he liked that record. He said he didn't, he doesn't like his words to the song uh, when he listens to it. He says they're accusatory and condescending and they're not fully thought out. Uh, and he said it's easy to misconstrue. So uh, Neil admits he may have gotten it wrong, which is kind of interesting. Uh, words Between the Lines of Age, uh, the final song on the album, it does have a big guitar workout uh, with the band, which is sort of the Neil Young style, four chords, a lot of improvised solos, and just kind of goes on for a little bit. Uh, and it also kind of goes between a 4-4 time signature uh, on the verses and choruses. And then during the interludes, it goes into 11-8. Just an odd, odd time, time signature. The Needle and the Damage Done was taken from a live recording uh, from UCLA. Uh, and so they really got together uh, in Nashville with the country players. Neil had come to Nashville to do the Johnny Cash show. Uh, Linda Ronstadt, James Taylor were also on there. And so, went into Quadraphonic Sound Studios. Uh, Neil Young kind of came over, and everything started to come together. Uh, he kind of liked uh, the band. You've probably seen their records, uh, Area Code 615. And he had these songs that he, he'd been out there uh, singing on the road. And if you've got the live at Massey Hall... Uh, recording, which I do, and I think it's a great intimate, intimate recording. He just he was putting together a band. He had the songs; they were they were there, and so a lot of those area code six one five guys were usually working um, around Nashville. He got Kenny Buttry, uh, Tim Drummond, who happened to just just be walking down the street, uh, Ben Keith on steel guitar, and they got together and uh, worked on Old Man. Uh, they did uh, a couple other songs. I know Dance, Dance, Dance was one of them. And so they were working on it, and album kind of came together. Now, the two symphony songs, A Man Needs a Maid, There's a World, Neil got with Jack Nietzsche and the London Symphony Orchestra and 
recorded those those tracks, and a lot of people felt like maybe a little bit over orchestrated. I think they're beautiful songs, and they're very dramatic. Uh, there's a couple of uh, electric songs that were recorded uh, at his ranch. He used a remote system to do it. And so, uh, are you ready for the country? Um, words for a couple of those tracks. And then uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash called in to do some background vocals. And so, mixed the album down, and here we have it. Now, Neil Young famously kind of said after this, he um, he went for the ditch. He didn't want to be in the middle of the road or whatever. Uh, Neil Young fans know about this. But um, when the album was released, it really was mixed. People weren't sure uh, how to take it. Some people felt like it was a retread. But in recent times, it's gone on to be the classic that it is that, that we all know and love. And it's worthy of the commercial success that, it, that it's received. And so that's why I'm talking about Harvest, today's daily record. Like, comment, subscribe, share, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Tommy Burton 75 In the meantime, I'll see you all again tomorrow with another daily record.